So in a recent survey, students said one of the things they were most confused about is business cycles. So I thought I would just do this short video to help review those. So first of all, um, if you don't have your handout that from class, this handout is also on e-learning in chapter one. So once you have that handout, so this is a list of some of the common business cycles that we have within many businesses. So a business cycle is a set of transactions that help achieve a goal. So for example, within the expenditure cycle, we have a create a purchase order, uh, receive goods, receive an invoice, and pay the vendor as many of the transactions that are in that expenditure cycle. So let's start. So those all together help us purchase goods. So let's start at the top. So here at the top, we have the financing cycle. This is how we get financing for a company. So this could include things like getting a loan, a mortgage, which is more for um, property, or raising capital via selling stock to shareholders. In these cases, we are getting cash in return and we are giving cash at the end. So for example, with a loan, we would take out a loan for say example, $10,000, we would get that cash. And at the end, we would give $10,000 back plus more than likely interest. In the case of stock, we're getting funds from stockholders and we're giving cash in the form of periodic dividends. There's always this type of e exchange of resources within each business cycle. So in the loan, for example, a loan, the transactions would be to apply for the loan, we would receive cash, we would record it in the cash disbursement journal, we would make that deposit. So those funds would then go to either the expenditure cycle or the human resources cycle. So in the human resources or payroll cycle, employees are giving labor, so, but on the company side, they are giving cash in order to receive labor. So we have, and then with that, we have our payroll cycle where every uh, month, two weeks, depending on individuals get paid, the payroll is calculated and those checks go out. So we can see that labor comes down here, which we'll talk about in a moment. Notice our funds are also coming here to the expenditure cycle. So these are things that we are buying. So it could be raw materials or supplies. Um, this is focusing on raw materials because it goes into the production cycle. So once again, this would be create a purchase order. We would, we would receive the goods. We would then pay for them. So we're giving cash in order to get some goods or raw materials in return. If you're unsure if something is an expenditure cycle, look for things like buy, purchase, or dealing with a supplier or vendor. Notice data is coming out of all of these and every cycle has data coming into the general ledger system, which is then takes that data and transforms it into information for our users, both internal and external. Next, we have the production cycle. In this, we take our labor that we got from the human resources cycle and some of our goods and raw materials from the expenditure cycle, and we put them together to transform them into finished goods. So this is, um, you know, converting to work in process, then to our finished goods as we put things together. Notice the data also goes back to the general ledger system. We could also, rather than make our goods, we could have, we could buy complete goods and come straight down here to the revenue cycle as well. So the revenue cycle is where we uh, give goods to some customer and we get cash in return. 
So we're looking for anything that says buy, or we're working with a customer. So this includes all of our customer support as well. Uh, this would include getting a sales order, uh, potentially shipping the goods to a customer, and then collect billing them and collecting cash at the end. Well, I hope this has helped uh, do a little review of the business cycles. And with that, we will conclude. Don't hesitate to drop me an email if you have questions. Thank you.